Hello, everyone. So it will be the second session for this week to talk about Lecture 2B. OK, anyway, so uh, as usual, I'd like to talk about some announcements and then take any uh, ad uh, administrative issues you might have. Okay, I see some questions on the chat, but I will uh, get back to them in a moment. Okay, So some quick announcement for you guys. So you have your programming test one starting from 2 p.m. EST today, right, in about an hour. And so, uh, yeah, so the, there's a guy, there's a practice, well, I'm pretty sure you know. Something I, will, I would like to emphasize for your programming test one, okay, in some ways, it's more like a tip. The most common problem I have seen in my earlier courses, you know, who, who also got, you know, similar uh, programming tests, is they don't have enough time to really submit, okay? So you are given 90 minutes to uh, complete the entire test. So that one, you want to make sure you leave about 10 minutes Okay, you can set an alarm, maybe about 80 minutes time, you should really wrap up and start a uh, submission process as soon as you can. So, and then you are supposed to do, for example, that will include, you know, all the import and also uh, download, you know, from the e-class. That's in the beginning of the test. At the end of the test, once you're done, you want to make sure you export uh, your projects into a zip into somewhere on your computer and then make sure when you upload to the e-class for submission you upload the correct version i have some students earlier who uh, simply submitted their starter code for grading of course you wouldn't get anything right so export and also upload to e-class do not only leave about one or two minutes to do this because you never know uh, what might actually block your prog uh, progress around that time so you want to leave i would suggest about 10 minutes to make sure you wrap up the stuff and then submit because as soon as the 19 minutes is up, the E-class uh, e will actually close the submission strictly. In that case, you wouldn't be able to submit anymore. In that case, you will have to go to, uh, I presume you already read over the policies uh, about the uh, programming test in the guide. You go there and then see what you should do. All right, you want to follow that strictly. Okay. And then uh, the tutorial video on your lab number one uh, has been, um, uh, for the solution has been released since Sunday. I'm going to disable its access uh, uh, very soon because during the test, I think uh, uh, to be fair, I should not really allow its access. Okay, but if you still want to look at that, maybe you can do that now right away. Right, you may have you may still have some time. Okay, but I will dis uh, disable that very soon. I'll give you access again for your study after the programming test. And for your lecture week number four, it's about the uh, JUnit test and exceptions. I haven't seen any Google Doc questions on the uh, on the web, so maybe everybody is okay. But if you're really behind on following the lecture, it would be uh, your call to really follow the lecture. You know, uh, at your own pace. Excuse me, it would be your call to follow the lecture in time. Otherwise, you might just struggle with the lab two as well. Lab two will definitely require some understanding about exceptions and also JUnits with exceptions. That's something you want to go over. If you actually catch up a little bit late, you can still reach out to me uh, for questions. Then for your lab number two, notice that it has been released since last Friday for almost a week. So it will be due next Friday. Okay, So that's uh, something you want to keep in mind. Really plan your, uh, plan your time accordingly with the deadline. All right, so that's about it. Do you have any administrative issues, uh, questions you want to ask me? John. I saw your hand uh, raised. Oh, you don't have a question anymore, I guess. MD, please. Sorry, I just uh, wanted to know where do you post this uh, tutorial video of lab one? I'm on your website, but I'm not sure which uh, section you posted under. You mean, the, uh, you mean the solution video for lab one? Yeah. So that one, as I mentioned in my early announcement, if you go to the lecture site, you want to go to uh, under week number four. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else about question? Oh, let me see the chat. For programming test one, you are only suggested to put some extra test cases. But any test cases you put, or if you didn't put any test cases, it's not going to affect your grading. Okay. It's only advice that you do that. Does the name of the exported zip file matter? Yes, it does. So that's why you got to read over the instruction carefully, which I did. Uh, specify pretty much like how you will see in the actual test in your practice test so make sure you do your practice test uh, in time and then uh, so you will follow everything accordingly okay so the name does matter MD still have question uh, with your hands uh, raised
Okay, I guess not. All right, so we don't have any question on the Google Doc. All right, so do you guys have any questions related to tutorial, lectures, or lab one or lab two? Any questions? Anyone? Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, hi. Just a quick question um, uh, with regards to the programming test. Uh, programming test. Reading programming reading test one. Yes. What about it? Yes, I'm reading the instructions and it's grading that we will also be treated by additional unit tests. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so you just you just mentioned that mm -hmm. uh, it's only suggested. So just a little bit. Uh, Correct. Confusing. Correct. It's only a suggestion. So let's say a, set, a different. Uh, let me give some example. So if you didn't end up having time to put any J unit test cases, that's okay. You wouldn't get any penalty because of that. And number two, uh, if you do put some uh, additional test cases uh, for your, uh, you know, in the starter test or you create a new class, you wouldn't be penalized by any way. So it's only for your own uh, benefits. If you didn't have time to do it, that's completely fine. I see. And are there, are there no extra marks for it? No, there are no extra marks. In some way, if you can actually write some extra test cases for your code, you are trying to uh, make sure that you wouldn't fail, you know, some grading tests that we're going to run on you, uh, run your submitted code. So in some way, you are getting some extra mark for yourself in some way, but you wouldn't get like an extra, extra marks, you know, by having test cases. No, you wouldn't. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. MD, you got a question again? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to confirm. Uh... For our programming test one, uh, do you want a specific name for the exported file? Yes, or... well, that's what I just said, right? So if you look at the uh, practice test uh, that I put on the E class, in the instruction there, it does say, for example, that one should be practice test.zip. In your uh, programming test, it will be something like a test one, maybe A for version A, or test one B for version B. So you got to follow the uh, instruction carefully. So. Uh, everything that we specify in the instruction, you got to follow. Yes. So the name does matter. I have a question. Go ahead. So um, when we're opening the file, I'm having some trouble. So uh, in the in the demonstration there, it's uh, Jackie slash desktop slash EECS mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then dash workspace, right? So yep. what if what if my workspace is just on my desktop so like when i'm, uh, I'm going, okay so i don't i don't know i'm i don't really have that um no no like that I one just example of course you will have to adapt to your own path right so you definitely wouldn't have the same path so let me just yeah. try to illustrate that give me a moment let me illustrate that to make sure yeah you don't really want to get penalty because of this kind of stuff i really don't want to so let's uh, not do this properly give me a moment Okay, yeah, because me... I've been having, I've been having trouble like even opening it, and I don't want to waste like a lot of time doing that on the test. Yeah, but that's something you should have done already for lab one, right? Yeah, I had trouble opening it for. You lab had trouble? One yeah, you, you want to see if you got trouble, you should have reached out to me earlier. So uh, anyway, so let's do it now. Okay, let's say you already downloaded the starter code on the desktop over here. Okay. Yeah. And then what you're gonna do is launch your Eclipse. Okay, let me just start from scratch. Okay. Let's say, for example, you can create a new workspace from scratch. Let's say on your desktop, you may have an empty folder. I just call it uh, maybe, let's say, Jackie workspace. You can put whatever name you like, like that. Okay. So that one's empty. And then I'm going to launch my Eclipse. And then I'll choose that folder as the uh, workspace. So what I will do is I'll go to uh, browse and go to my desktop. And then I'll choose that uh jackie workspace right in your case you just choose a different folder hey okay, are you okay so far yeah okay and then you launch okay good okay hide oh, and then wait, I, have, I have a question so we shouldn't put the zip file inside the workspace folder mm, well it's okay if you put it but i don't think you need to okay okay mm -hmm. i would suggest you don't yeah okay let me tell you uh, several things okay and then 
you're going to say file and then import, right? That's something uh, you, you did actually for your earlier labs. And then you're going to say general existing project to workspace and select archive file, browse, and then just go to wherever you downloaded the file. Of course, if you put it inside a workspace, you can select it from there. Okay? But I would suggest you put it somewhere uh, different. Let's say I choose a uh, practice test one, let's say, and then I'll say open. Okay, you can see the project is actually here, and then I'll say finish. Okay, let's say do that. Of course, you're gonna do uh, your own work uh, to put things into the model package and etc. Let's say you're done. Let's say around ten minutes before your timer run uh, expires, now you're ready to submit. So what you would do is you're gonna follow the same procedure, right? You're gonna say uh, export, and then general archive over here. And then you have to browse to somewhere on your desktop. So now you can see I already store the uh, starter code practice test.zip on my desktop. So you really don't want to submit this zip for your, for your grading. You wouldn't get anything, right? So here you got several choices, okay? Uh, maybe an obvious choice would be you can maybe go into your workspace and then put it inside. That might be one choice. Or you can store that somewhere else. For example, I can say, let me just show you what I think would be the safest way. Why don't you create a one called submission, okay? And then I'm just going to choose on my desktop again. I will go to submission, which is empty. And you can see here, this is the path to submission. And then I'll call that exactly the name as suggested by the instruction. In this case, that would be practice test. One, maybe. Okay, and then I say finish. And you can see under submission, that's exactly the one I want to submit rather than the one on the desktop. So that's the one you should upload. Is it clear how, to you? you? Kind of, but I'm. You made that folder, and you, I didn't see you add anything into it. So I, I kind of, I'm kind of confused how that ended up there. You mean which folder? Submission. Yeah. So you made that folder. Submission. You it, yeah. Submission initially is empty, right? And then when you export your project into a zip, you want to export a zip into the submission folder, and now it's there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's okay, what I did. Okay. okay? Yeah. Is it clear to yeah. you about the process up to now? Yeah, it is. I, I'm going to have to try it out. And Please do try. You know, I would say before you really feel comfortable about how this will work, really don't attempt just yet. Otherwise, you might just be wasting time, as you said. I don't want you to do that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. But is there any part you think it might be a little bit unclear? You can tell, tell me now so I can uh, uh, clarify further. Or you're okay. I think uh, usually when I do it, I... I, I open up the zip file so right then so then when I open it I have to look for something else to import I guess okay so I would say yeah me might be tempted let's say if this is what you downloaded to your desktop don't just double click <laughs> if you double click it will just give you a practice test folder that's not the way to go right you want to import the project into Eclipse by follow the procedure which I did right yeah that's, yeah that's something you want to avoid doing yeah, and that's where I trip up because when I do that, then I'm I'm go importing and I'm looking for that. And exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Practice that. Uh, if you still find anything that you may uh may not be so clear, you can still drop by my office hour today. We can take a look, maybe closer. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Let me see. Uh. Uh, is Ilya? Hi, Professor. Yes, Ilya. I oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. Okay. Go ahead, please. No, it's okay. I had a one request. I was, I thought the practice test ended at two. I was wondering, is there any way you could open it again, or maybe just um, upload the practice test zip file into the chat um, because I can't access it anymore because it closed that one. Oh, but just you haven't tried so far? No, because I was. Um, I was going over the lab one review and okay okay you I'm know what what i can do uh that's okay because i think uh, just for this time i will ex uh, i will extend the uh practice test one maybe for a few hours maybe until 4 p.m or 5 p.m so please uh make sure you try that beforehand would that, would that help yes that would okay help awesome very much thank uh, you uh so it, uh, i think i set it to be closing at 2 p.m so as soon as we finish our q a i'll do, go ahead and set it I, and then, I think you said it closed at 1 p.m. Actually, that's why. I did? Okay. You know what? Yeah. Why don't I try to set it now for before I forget? Why don't I do it now? Thank you. Okay. That's a reasonable request. I can definitely do it. Okay, let me do it right away. Okay.
Can I ask you another question as you're doing it? Uh, give me a moment. Uh, that'll be very quick sure. when I do it. Yeah. So practice programming test one. And then let me just go to edit settings. Timing. Okay. How about I extend that until maybe 5 p.m.? Okay. So you got another four hours. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Another question, please. Okay, and um, I was wondering for the written, written tests, yeah. uh, I'm not sure, I, I felt like that you implied in your email that you might increase the time for the written test. Yes, actually, that's the right interpretation. You know, somehow I wasn't very uh, direct about it. So yes, I will increase the time for everybody, for okay. sure, for written tests okay, too. Wonderful. And mm -hmm. my last question was, uh, could you go over the, um, the exercise that you left us for your lab one review was uh, taking something out of the array. I was wondering if you could mm -hmm. uh, perhaps show that to us, if yeah. it's possible. I think for that one, yes, I'm, I'll be more than happy to do so. But I think uh, the code, the reason I didn't really show the code for that one specifically is because I think that one, you should really work out exactly what to do it. But I'll try to give you a, another example, which might be a little bit uh, lar a larger input array. And then for that one, you can uh, get a more concrete hints about how to do it. Oh. Okay, okay, let's do that. Let's do it that way. Okay, good. Okay, let me now go to uh, about removal, right? Okay, let's now see how we can do it. Let's say, for example, let's say you got an array, let's say A over here. And then let's say the array we have actually got, already got four elements, uh, maybe five, that's fine. So let's say one, two, three, four, five and etc all the way until the end okay let's say we got a number of elements so there should be some counter let's say for example let's say let me just get one more here okay let's say the number the number of element uh, number of elements let's say okay. so this is a counter for the number of elements okay let's see how many we uh, have we got Let's say each one of them is simply a string. Just make it easier. So maybe the first one is Alan. The second one is Mark. And the third one is Tom. And the fourth one is Jin. Let's say we got four elements there. And then uh, in this case, NOE would just be four to begin with. So that'll be, uh, if you talk about the indices, it's going to be zero, one, two, three, four. So conceptually, NOE is really pointing to this particular slot over here. Right? Are you okay with the setup so far? Uh, yes, but when you say pointing, uh, when NOE is four, so we have zero is one, one is two, two is three, like in terms of the number, three is four. So, uh, no, when, when I say pointing to this conceptually, so you can think about the value of NOE being four. It's kind of indicating that if you want to store the next element into the array, you should go, uh, it should go to index four. That's what I meant. So, and also so far you got one, two, three, four, you got four elements already in the array. Remember in the programming pattern, we store from the left to the right. So, so far we have stored four already. So that's why yeah. NOE should be four. Right, point, it's pointing where the next one would go. Yeah, yeah, was one. yeah. When I say pointing here, I, I'm not implying that it's actually reference type. I'm just saying that it's uh, it's uh, conceptually. You can think about it's really pointing to or denoting the position that's going to store the next elements. Yeah, that's okay. uh, what I meant. I okay, good. So far, so good. Let's say what we want to do is we want to remove. Let's uh, do one uh, a little bit more concrete hints for you. Let's say we want to remove. Let's say Mark from, let's say we want to remove Mark from the array, okay? So as I actually uh, hinted visually uh, in your tutorial video, what's gonna happen is we gotta do several things, okay? Number one, so find out the index of Mark. If it exists, if Mark simply doesn't exist, so that means it wouldn't do anything, nothing to remove. So in this case, we can easily write a loop to find out what the index is for mark. In this case, you can see the index for mark is actually one over here. Okay? In this case, it's going to be one. That's step number one. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can do it. And number two, once you find out the index for mark, you know that eventually you want to get rid of mark. 
and then you want to let this slot should be replaced by Tom. And what used to be Tom over here should be the next one, which will be Jim. And what used to be Jim over here should be now. And then the NOE conceptually should really go to the left over here, which means that'll be decreased to uh, three. So this is kind of the steps that we have to go through by uh, by your code. Okay, are you okay with this conceptually so far? I, I'm okay with it conceptually. It just mm -hmm. when it comes to the implementation is when I kind of freeze up because, for okay. example, for step one, do we have to get some sort of a accessor method that finds the index when yep. the name matches? For yeah, for number one here, you got two uh, at least two different ways to do it. Either you can do, uh, define some accessor yourself, which will find out the index of some particular elements with a matching name. That's one way. Or you can simply put that block of code inside your remove method just to find out that index uh, into a local variable. Either way will work. Okay, I see. One. Either way. Either way is okay. You can try either way. Okay, for no number two over here. Basically, for number two, what's going to happen is, uh, so we're going to shift each element to the right of marks index. And we already knew that actually that index is actually one. So what do I mean? Each element to the right of marks index. So each one of them to the right will be, you can see index two is to the right of index one. Index three is also to the right of index one. So we got these two elements. So somehow you want to write just another loop to somehow go over everything that's actually to the right of this index of mark, which uh, who actually got a matching name. Okay, and what should you do for each one of them? You are going to shift their places to the left by one position. Okay, and this is going to be, and then, uh, Okay, how about this? I will write a little bit better. For, for each, each one of them, namely, is going to be this and this. For each one of them, gonna shift their position to the left. By one. Okay, namely, you're going to do something like this. So here, Tom should not be pointing by this uh, uh, reference anymore. Instead, it should be pointing to by one. And then for Jin, it should not be pointing to by three anymore. It should be pointing to by two. Conceptually, right? Visually, that's uh, what you should do. But exactly how you do it, let me, let me give you one more hint. For example, you want to say uh, array at index one is assigned to array at index two. That's actually how you make sure uh, this part over here, right? If you look at that, array at index one, if you say that one is reassigned to array at index two, so that means rather than pointing to over here, it's now going to point to wherever index two is pointing to. That's how you fix this error. But you may have to do this repetitively because you don't really know exactly how many elements are to the right of the marks index. So you gotta write another loop for this. Okay, so step number two is something that's uh, crucial to get done. Okay, and then uh, uh, a little bit more housekeeping stuff you have to do after this, you gotta say number three, number three. Okay, once you have done that, you can see this original uh, index, uh, this is used to be the last elements, right? Remember we used to have four names. So this is index three, used to be the last one. You want to make sure that one also points to null. It's actually important. Okay, so what you would do is you would say the last uh, last cell points to null. Okay, and then number four, you want to make sure you decrement the NOE by one. Okay, so rather than four, it's not going to be one. So that would be NOE over here. So whatever NOE is pointing to should still be null. That's always the case. Okay, so number four, you're going to say NOE decremented. So these are the four steps you have to implement, and each one of them will be uh, rather straightforward to use a loop or use some conditional or some variable assignments. So hopefully that will help. Is it clear to you about what to do? I see. 
I see. It's a little bit more clear. I just had a mm -hmm. question for, for step two. You mentioned we might have to do two loops. I was wondering... Oh, just one loop. Just... You don't need two loops, just one. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I say what I have in my mind? Is that or is that academic? Uh, that one, you know, I would rather that people also have a chance to really okay, think okay. about it. You know, if you really want to run your idea with me, why don't you drop at my office hour? I can run over that with you. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. But this one here, you can, uh, I think it's really important to really know and understand about visually what it, what's really happening. Why are we shifting to the left? You really want to understand because uh, in another test, maybe I might just ask you the other way to say, I rather than uh, may, maybe the way we put the array, rather than from left to right, maybe we'll go from right to left. And then I, now I want to remove something from here. And then the way you do it will be completely the opposite, right? Not really for the upcoming programming test one, but I'm just saying for future tests, it's actually possible. So you just want to make sure you really understand why we are doing this. That's actually more important for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, if you want to run through your algorithm with me, I'll be more than happy to do so, but maybe during the office hour. Okay. Abdallah, please. Oh, I had a, had a separate question, but uh, for since we've been looking at this, I was wondering, wait, so you're, you're not gonna, you're not going to show us how to do the algorithm here? I think uh, with, uh, you know, uh, when you say not showing you how to do it, you mean to show you the code, right? I think uh, in this example here, because it's kind of different from uh, all the other methods that I showed you earlier by code, I think it would be best for your learning. Given my visual hints, you want to work out exactly what to write in Java. I think that will be better. Otherwise, if I just show you the code directly, you're not, you may not be uh, grasping that completely. So okay. based on my hands um, over here, just try to work out the solution. If you really cannot, you can drop by my office hour. We can take a look at what you have written first before we can uh, go further. Yeah, OK. Um, so for my other question, I was I was doing the steps that you told open the file, right? And so instead of like uh, directing my Eclipse to open it directly, I just uh, directed it to open the workspace, like you said, right? Yeah. Um, so when I open the workspace, it opens up my uh, Apple shop. So the old Apple shop that I had, I, I guess it just automatically opens that. Do, do you know why? Yeah, because yeah, it sounds like in the, in the same workspace, you already store your Apple shop projects. That's why. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm, can I not store everything in my workspace? That's like, fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you cannot. I'm saying that's fine since you asked me. So that's fine. But I think uh, now if you try to import the your test one or practice test one project in there, that's fine. You can do that too. So so like when I launch it and it opens up the Apple shop, uh, how, what should I do? Should I like just close it or? What do you mean close it? You already, you already, did you see the package explorer? Yeah, so the package explorer has Apple shop. Yeah, exactly. So now can you import? You can, you can now just import your project into the same workspace. Oh, so so it would just it would just stay there, but it would be a different project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but is there a way to like get rid of it so I I don't see it while I'm working? So why don't or... you create a brand new folder, which is empty, okay. and use that so maybe how... for all your uh just for this particular programming test? Why don't you do that? So that if you want to c clear up any confusion, create an empty folder like what I just did to show you. Empty folder, let's say uh, what, uh, what a temp or whatever folder it is, and launch that empty folder as your workspace. So there'll be no project there to, uh, to start with. And then you import your uh, maybe practice test one or programming test one into there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, All right. Uh, good. Okay. So, guys, any more questions? Anton. Well, Professor, um, I had a question about the practice test. How sure you, you plan to go over it? Or... So, uh, sorry, about, about the practice test, which one? Um, well, I'm like, I don't know if you plan to go over it during this uh, Q&A or, uh, you know, or yeah, for, the, for, uh, for the practice test, maybe not. Uh, because I already went over in detail the your lab one solution. I think the lab one solution somehow might be even more challenging than your uh, practice test one. So I think uh, when you get a chance to go over the um, uh, lab one solution, I think that, that would definitely help. 
uh, you complete the uh, practice test one. But if you have a particular test that you are wondering about how to pass it, I, I can uh, maybe give you some hints quickly. Uh, okay. Uh, I can understand a lot one better than, uh, for some reason I'm stuck on like halfway through when um, there is uh, basically in transcript class, you have add registration methods, okay. mutator methods, and you have, it's kind of similar to the, uh, I noticed from the Apple refurbish store, mm -hmm. how it's, you get one. Can you tell me the line number for that test? Uh, line number, okay. Um, yeah, which line is it? Well, maybe just tell me the test number. That might help too. So it's test number 25. 25. Okay. 24. 24. 24. Oh, 24. Okay. Give me a moment. I'll go there first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this one here, uh, let's see what we're having over here. Uh, for the longest time, I was confused yeah. because I didn't see the S at the end. So it's like a, a diff separate mutator on top of the other ones. So there you have a two odd registration mutators, right? And then this is mm -hmm. the third one. Yeah, apparently you can see this one is with the S. So that means it may not be the same as uh, at registration, like a singular form. So this one here, you can see that one's taking registrations. So what's registration? It's declared as an array of registration. So accordingly, what you should do is, you can see the context object for this method here is Allen. Allen was declared as transcript. So that means this method here should really go to that uh, class. And then at registrations with S at the end, should really take a parameter of type uh, registration array. That's what, should, what you should declare. Yeah, I've, I've been working on that one. I just, um, uh, what goes inside the method? Uh, method? problem um uh, like i understand it should be it should it should be like uh go to the same transcripts array that you kind of oh yeah okay i can here. give you a little bit hints let me give you a little bit hints over here for this one here okay so what you're going to do is uh let's say a, a presumably you got your class uh transcript let's not worry about public and then you will have one method there, uh, of course, maybe public void and then at registration. And then it's going to take a registration array. Let me say Rex over here. OK, so apparently this one here, unlike the normal one we did uh, earlier, which is only a single registration object, right? Normally what we did is just a single registration object, but now you got an array. So just uh, just like an extra level of complexity, okay? So what you should do is you may want to uh, iterate through the Rex array one by one, one element by one element. And then, uh, and then at each uh, registration objects, right? Each member, each, uh, each element in the uh, array is going to be of type registration. And then you're gonna add it to the current uh, transcript at each uh, each registration objects into the uh, array. So I presume you actually declare some private attributes in the transcript class, right? So maybe into yes. the yeah. Let me just call that registration just for now. Into the private registrations array, right? In each iteration. So that'd be kind of the uh, conceptual idea you have to implement, but it's, it can be done in a, by a loop. Okay. Uh, Is it clear okay. to you about what you do, about this method here? Yeah, I think you clarified. So it basically, you kind of have making a new array and, with, and you have to match it with the already mm -hmm. existing. Um, for this one here, I don't think you actually need a new array because uh, you are given an array as the input over here. So there's no need. And also notice that it's a mutator method, meaning that you are not returning. For example, if you need to return an array, in that case, maybe you, you have to create a new array. But in this case, it's void. So it's not, it's not going to return anything. So you may just, uh, you might, uh, it may be sufficient for you just to uh, iterate through this array over here and then just, uh, try to see what to do for each uh, elements uh, of the registration you see and try to add them into the uh, registrations array in the current class. That's what you got to do. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And yeah. For, uh, so, you, like for the test, uh, it should be I don't know diff more difficult or about the same as lab one? Would you say? Or? Uh, it will. It's uh, it's definitely simpler than lab one. Lab one is pretty long. Because you got uh, like a four classes to handle, so that's actually nice for your learning when you got enough time. But for the lab, uh, for programming test one, you got ninety minutes, so the number of classes you will be asked to program will be reduced for sure. So I think uh, that should be sufficient for, uh, like a, a ninety minutes. But let me give you the best tip: in in case you really cannot finish all the test cases, that's okay because uh, you you're gonna get partial marks for every test you actually pass. So in that case, you want to make sure you really start a uh, su submission process when you got about 10 minutes left. We really want, we really want to wrap up and then uh, make a submission complete. Otherwise, when you miss the submission, you will be hard to really grade you. Okay. And uh, when you, you tell me how your office hours today, I just wanted to ask you about like lab one, the lab yeah. not when you sure. stop, just a strong solution. It's, what time do you start, 2.30 or 3.00? We uh, you mean what time do I start my office hour? Yes, today. Three. At uh, three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. No problem. Okay. Um, professor. Yes. Yes. Uh, I had a question for the practice test. Um, okay. I, I was stuck on I was stuck on line number two hundred six. Two hundred six. Okay. Let me take yeah. a look. Two hundred six. This guy here. Yeah. Okay. I was just confused, like, uh, how am I calling the get number of credits? Like, are we, am I, am I putting the code in the registration class? Okay. The um, okay, so if you think about what's happening here is, uh, let me try to take a look. Okay, good. So if you look at this line here, the first line, whenever we are creating a new registration objects, we are passing three input values. The course name apparently is a string, and also we are passing some uh, uh, uh like, like a number six. Somehow this number six is actually used as the expected value over here. So that means the second one must be the credits you set to the objects, and the third number seventy nine. Seventy nine is actually mentioned here as the expected value, and that's expected to be the return value of get marks. So you know that this should be the course name, this should be the number of credits, and this should be the row marks for that particular course. Are you okay so far? Yeah. Okay, good. And then let's go back to this particular uh, method, uh, this assertion here. So, uh, Alan, oh, well, Alan registration one was declared as uh, registration. So that's the type of the context objects. So that means get number of pre uh, credits should really go to the registration class rather than the transcript class. That's something you have to be very clear, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when you declare this method here in the uh, uh, registration class, so you can see that one takes no parameter, just empty. That's easy. And then uh, we can see that's also an accessor method because you're using its return value over here to compare against this expected value six. Okay, that's, uh, so that's why it should be public, maybe some numerical type, and then uh, get number of credits and then empty pair of parentheses. But now the question is, what kind of numerical type should we put? Should it be integer or should it be double? That's a question. There's another hint to you about the assertion. Remember when we spoke about comparing uh, like a floating point number, I mentioned that the uh, decimal number, like a uh, decimal number in our normal, uh, like a conceptual system, it cannot be uh, represented perfectly in a binary form in a computer. So that's why whenever you want to compare floating point number with some fractional part, you want to specify some tolerance tolerance level. So this can kind of uh, kind of tells you that since we have the tolerance level here, so this return value must be some double. Well, typically we can just use a double for a floating point number. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So what you're gonna do you're gonna do is you're gonna say public uh, get uh, get number of credits and then parentheses and then that's uh, basically what uh, and also the returning double of course for that method. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Very good. Guys, uh, since I'm now in the practice test one, do you have any other questions about this? Feel free. I have more of just like a general question. Yeah, sure. 
So if we were not to finish the whole J unit test mm -hmm. and there's some um, like compiling errors, can we comment out the code or should we finish up the methods or? Uh huh. So I think uh, depending on the, where the compilation error is, if somehow the compilation error happens in the J unit tests, uh, that means you haven't finished certain methods, right? In that way, for example, yeah. let's say when you first start a practice test, you got uh, you got so many uh, red underline. So, for example, let's say let's say say uh, let's say somehow you got some compilation error for this test. If you really have no time, so that uh, and you have uh, you really have limited time left, you got a transcript un uh, being read right underlined. That tells you that you're missing that class called transcript. So that, that might be some errors you can fix right away, right? You can just create a class in the model package called transcript, and then you can declare all the methods with the corresponding parameters, and also just return. Uh, some default values. If that uh, happened to be a accessor, that's what you can do. That's kind of what I did uh, as a strategy uh, for your lab one solution walkover. You can take a look. And then um, if you really got some compilation error at the end when you submit the code, uh, you wouldn't get zero, but I think the TA will try to maybe fix the compilation error for you uh, if, that, uh, if they are easy to fix. And then once they fix them, they will run, rerun the, all the test cases the starter test plus the grading test together, and then uh, to see what you get. And then we'll take some penalty uh, for submitting something that wouldn't compile. That's what we would do. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's what I'm asking. So to avoid that penalty, right, can can we comment out the J units that, because- No, nope, so you cannot. Say we can... No, you cannot. I tell you why. Because when we actually run your, uh, when we run your submitted code, we're going to use the original version of the starter tests. So even though you comment out a copy that's uh, on your machine, it's not going to happen when we actually uh, run your run grading test on your code. I see. So that means if we if we weren't to get to the end of it, we, we should just go and do all the methods before we submit it. Exactly. So when you say do the methods, I presume you meant at least to declare the methods and maybe return the default value if possible. That's at least uh, yeah, what you right. should do. Yes, exactly. That's the right strategy. OK, thank you. OK, good. Okay, sure. I got some little private request. Can I go over the get report method in transcript class? Of course. Let me just take a look. So get report. Let me just search for that. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's say if we go to uh, test 21 over here, you can see get report. Um, uh, so the question you got to ask yourself, you know, always, where should this uh, method go? Which class should it go? You can see the context object Allen was declared of type over here, uh, transcript. So that means the get report method must go to transcript, number one. Okay, number two, should it be an accessor or mutator? It should be an accessor because its return value over here is used to assign to some variable over here. So that should return something. But what should it return? You should look at the variable declaration over here. It's returning, uh, it's, uh, being, uh, it's being assigned to a variable declare as a registration array. So that means what we should have, let me sketch that quickly. And I'll just, uh, if you want to take notes, you can take, uh, take it now. So in the uh, transcript plot, we should say public and then registration array over here and then get report. So that's the method you have to declare at least. And then of course to uh, returns, uh, you can just return maybe null to begin with so that everything will at least compile. Okay, that's what you should do. And how should you implement it? I can tell you for this method here, it's very, it's basically similar to the get entries method we did in the review part two, uh, week number two. You basically have to go over the array, that's uh, the private array, all the way to the counter, and then you try to create some local array. In this case, because you're returning some array as the return value. So locally, you need, uh, you need uh, some local array for sure. And then you're going to go over uh, this, uh, the private array one by one, copy each element to the corresponding position of the return local array. Okay, so I was uh, hints for you. You may, you may want to look at the get entries method in the um, uh, your review part two. All right, does that answer your question about uh, get report? All right, awesome. All right. Okay, let me just undo this. Okay, guys, any more questions? Feel free. Any more? 
Yeah, since the uh, programming test number one is open until tomorrow, 2 p.m., meaning that the latest time you should really start your programming test one will be, will be 12.30 uh, in the afternoon. That will be the latest time. So if you don't really feel yourself uh, prepared for that, you may want to take some time, maybe uh, doing some study, right, about the relevant study materials all, uh, all made available to you. And then when you feel comfortable and do the test, all right? Another thing I want to point uh, point out to you guys very quickly, okay? Let me just say, okay. If you go back to the lectures page, and then you will see that under week number four, I posted a recording from yesterday, uh, from yesterday's uh, Q&A over here. If you go there, okay, you will see, uh, as usual, we got some roadmap over here, uh, over here. So that's about the topics I discussed over here, right? So for those of you who may want to get some uh, hints about how to solve the question for written test one, I went over three questions in detail yesterday. So you can look into them as well if you want some uh, some guidance. But if you got further questions, reach out to me. All right. So that's about what you can do uh, with this uh, q and I just posted about an hour ago. Okay. Okay, I'll pause for one moment to see if you got any further questions. Okay. Or you can drop by my office hour, which will be 3 p.m. Okay, hearing none, best of luck to your programming test one. If you got any more questions, drop by my office hour. Otherwise, yeah, I'll see you very soon. All right, you guys take care.